Okay, so the next example is this, um, this Lagrangian you can derive Maxwell's equations from. So this f mu nu is just defined as this, and similarly, you know, it has upper indices. It's the same thing, just with upper indices. So yeah, I've just written this out here, and I just want to uh, distribute this, you know, foil this, nothing fancy, just we'll get four terms here. And now uh, we just noting that, so this first and last term are exactly the same. It's just that their summing indices are called different things. So, you know, if I, if I changed nu to mu and mu to nu in this expression, it would be exactly the same as this term. But since these are, some, these are summing indices, I can do that. It's, um, I'm allowed to do that. So yeah, this is the same as this. And similarly, if I change new to new and this and new to new, these, these two terms are exactly the same. So knowing that we can just combine those, we'll get a two that'll cancel with one, you know, two over four is one half. And we'll just have these two terms. So um, that's kind of straightforward to do. I'll, uh, so in David Tong's lecture notes, he does not have the same expression here. He has this first term as it's the same as this, but the second term, I think he has like d mu a mu squared. So I think he's just wrong. I think he just fucked up. So this, I mean, this certainly gives the correct equations of motion. So this is certainly right. I don't know. I don't know what happened with his notes, but yeah. Uh, but so now we have to, you know, actually do the Euler-Lagrange equations here. And so, and now we have something that we didn't have before, which is that A is a vector field, so it has its own label. So to deal with that, we're going to our equations, we're going to label our field with a label. Uh, so it'll look like this. So again, notice that when I've written my equation here, I'm, I, I have mu's and nu's used here as summing indices, so I don't want to use any mu's or nu's when I write my equation. Um, so yeah, I'll take the Der the derivative with respect to the sigma th derivative of the tau component of a. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of hard to say, but we'll see that it's only it's it's very analogous to what we've been doing before. And then we'll we'll also have this term here. But you can see this Lagrangian only depends on the derivatives of a, so this will just be zero. So we only have to worry about this. So, uh, so we want to calculate these derivatives of this thing. And so just like before, we have some things that have upper indices. And we want to rewrite those as things with lower indices because we're taking the derivative with respect to things that have lower indices. So we do just what we did before, rewriting these using the Minkowski metric thing. Um, but we have two things that have upper indices. So we're going to need two Minkowski metrics for each term. So for example, just looking at the first term, um, well, all I've done is I've rewritten d mu as eta mu k dk and a nu as eta mu or eta nu lambda a lambda. So, and then this, the second term is, you know, you do the exact same kind of thing. Um, so I won't, you know, yeah, you, you can see that these are the same things, hopefully. And so all of this, you know, out in front is, again, it's just a constant. These are constant matrices. This is a number. So when we take our derivatives, we only have to worry about these two things. So, and this is a product of two things, so we're going to use the product rule. 
And so we're going to do like this times the derivative of this plus this times the derivative of this. So we're going to have to calculate things that look like, for example, d mu, derivative of d mu a nu with respect to d sigma uh, a tau. And just like before, the, you know, the, the fields are independent and their derivatives are independent. So unless we're talking about the same derivative, and unless we're talking, and we're talking about the same field, we're just going to get zero. And if they're the same derivative and same field, then we'll get one. And we can just uh, write that as products of these delta functions. So uh, both of these have to be one to get one. Otherwise, it's you know one times zero or zero times zero. So. Um, yeah, so that's actually easy, and so I, and all of the all of the terms, the derivative terms, are going to be like this. It's just so here we'll have, uh, you know, these things. For the derivative of this, we just have to replace mu and nu with k and lambda, and you know, similarly for these two, for this term. Uh, so if we do that. You'll see, so if we just focus on the first term here, uh, th again, this pulls out because it's just a constant, so that's here. And we'll have first times the derivative of the second plus second times the derivative of the first. <clears throat> and again, the second term works out the exact same way. And so we have this, and this is actually very easy to work with. It's all we, no, it's kind of fun actually, because we have, you know, two uh, raising things and two deltas. So we just have to, all we're doing is messing with the indices. So for, so for example, this D, I can raise the mu on this derivative. So it becomes DK. I can raise the new on this a, so it becomes a lambda, so I have dk a lambda times this, but then because of these, I'll replace the k with a sigma, and replace the lambda with a tau. So I will just get for this term a negative one half d sigma a tau. And you can check that if I do the same thing, work it all out with this term, I'll get another. Uh, I'll get a, the same thing. So, so these two terms give the same thing. And then these two terms will give not d sigma a tau, but d tau a sigma, if you work it out. And so I'll have, uh, so yeah, these four terms give these four terms. These two are the same, these two are the same. So the one halves will go away. And so I end up with, I'll write it as, so it's all this minus sign. So I'll write it as minus d sigma a tau minus d tau a sigma, uh, which is just negative f sigma tau, right? This was the definition of f. And so that's, um, you know, this inner part, but the equation of motion will be d sigma of this is equal to zero, because again, this is zero. So I just need to do, so that, so since this is that, uh, th that implies that the equations of motion will be d sigma of this equals zero. Um, I guess the fact that there's a minus sign doesn't really matter because it's equal to zero, but yeah. So this is the, the uh, right answer. So this is equivalent to Maxwell's equations if, you know, a is the usual vector potential you know, you can show that this is equivalent to Maxwell's equations. Um, I'm not going to do that because, you know, you know. <laughs>